I'm about to die. Hi, and welcome to episode 3 of the Chronological series. Today we are going to be completing February and March of 2001. The first game update was on February 5th, and on this day, RuneScape's second dungeon was released. Just like in the dungeon of Ghost Town, the combat levels of monsters in this dungeon gradually increase the further you venture into the dungeon. And at the end of the dungeon, there is the new strongest monster in game. This monster is the Moss Giant. The Moss Giant also drops the best in slot shield at a rate of 1 in 128. There's also a 1 in 128 chance of getting a spinach roll. And just like in Popeye, eating the spinach gives you a chance of receiving plus 5 strength boost. This strength boost was later removed as it was stackable with itself and other strength boosts. Oof, that is the wrong 1 in 128 drop. By the way, even though there are now two giants released, big bones have not yet to be released. And because of the plugin, since they are not released yet, I cannot bury them. So sadly enough, they will have to stay on the ground. Yup. Sadly enough, the black square shield is not released yet. It has about the same stats as the steel kite shield, but sadly enough, not released yet, so I really want that steel kite shield. Oh shit! That was really quick to be honest. The steel kite shield, even though it is 1 in 128, it took me 40 kills. This account is blessed. This account really is blessed. As for the stat difference, it is plus 5 in everything. That is the best in slot gear done of this update. So the next thing to do is to make a strength potion or let the apothecary make a strength potion. So therefore I will need some red spider eggs, which should be, oh right, there we go. Those are two red spider eggs. Now I just need five coins each which I have, and two Olympic Roots. So that is next on the to-do list. Let's hop over from Moss Giants to Hill Giants to get some Olympic Roots. Wait a minute. First, where are the stairs? I'm currently in the Edgefield Dungeon at the Hill Giants and I can't find any stairs. This is the end of the dungeon. Okay, I can't find the stairs anywhere in this room. Even though there is a brass key, which should have a use, right? Why would they else spawn it at the end of the dungeon? Secondly, I have killed two giants and I've gotten two limper roots. So does that mean it is 100% drop rate? <gasps> I'm about to die. OMG. Okay, since I can't find the stairs, I will have to walk all the way back. I still have a couple of kebabs left, so I should be fine. The hill giants are the boss monster of the Edgefield dungeon. Well, not Edgefield dungeon. Currently it's called Ghost Town and not Edgefield. Since there is nothing to edge, there's no wilderness yet. Lol, you can't make this up. This is the 4th KC. 4th KC, 2 kebabs, Limburg root. I was ready to be here like for multiple inventories of kebabs. No need for that anymore. Let's head to the apothecary. One strength potion, please. Four dose strength potion. Now, did you know that on the very first day, strength potions and spot potions, the potion that you can buy from the apothecary, which might be a required item for the forgettable tail quest, that spot potion, completely useless, those had pretty similar colors. And to stop people from getting scammed, on the next day, the 6th of February, Strength potions were made blue, spot potions green, and Kadava potions red. I think most people know about running, right? Nature rune running, law rune running were one of the most popular and easy money-making methods when you were really early level and you didn't really know much better. But running also already exists in the very first year of RuneScape. This is a picture of tip.it slash RuneScape 
asking for an ore running event. You simply get paid to bring the ore to the smelters and then go back to the mine, grab some more ore and bring it to the smelters. And that is going to be it for February 5th, 2001. On the 13th, there are two new buildings added to the game. The first one is in Alcarit, where you can now purchase plate skirts. Though smithing plate skirts is not yet possible. And the second building is the Champions Guild southwest of Varrock. In this guild, it is currently the best place to train your cooking, as there are chickens right next to a cooking range. So there's no need to make your way to a forest chop some logs, make a fire for every couple of meat that you've just gathered. And second, Jagex just released their very first quest cape. Kind of. Some quests awarded you with influence levels. And if you have completed every quest that gave influence, you have gained access to the Champions Guild, wherein there is a shop that sells the new best in slot cape that has armor plus two. The previous best in slot cape the black cape from Highwaymen had armor plus one, and the red cape sold in Varrock was just fashion scape. The shop that sells the prestigious blue cape is also the only shop that sells the only black armor in game, the black full helm. The black play legs and the adamant play body will be added to that shop later this year. Sadly enough, I don't have access to this new best in slot cape and I will have to move on to the next game update. Today imps are released and they come with a new quest. Gather all four different beats by killing imps to receive the new best in slot amulet giving you plus four aim. In OSRS, I have chosen to use the imp spawn between the Varrock Castle and the museum. It respawns pretty quickly and it only took me 110 kills. In 2001 scape, however, the respawn timer is much slower. There, I've chosen to use the imp spawns west of Ghost Town, south of Ghost Town, inside of Ghost Town and then the one east of Ghost Town. And then just loop between those four. Oh shit, really? <laughs> That's all four! Do they not drop duplicates in 2001? What? And with the completion of Imcatcher comes the completion of February 16th. So, let's move on to the final game update of February 2001. Today, Prince Ellie Rescue Quest is released, and with it comes a bunch of new items. Onions, red berries, rope, red and yellow dyes, as well as from today you can do some clay mining. There are also two NPCs added to Drainer Village, Sailor Ned and Witch Aggie. A little unrelated to the quest, but from today, the Champions Guild store now also sells black plate legs. As for the quest itself, it is pretty similar to the one that we have today, except that originally the Drainer guards were not aggressive. Second, walking from El Carrot to Drainer and back took a little longer, as the toll gate between Lumbridge and Drainer does not exist for another couple of months. This makes that the quest reward for Prince Ellie Rescue was the same as Ernest the Chicken and Shield of Arif. Some much needed money. Since this quest is influential, you must also complete Prince Ali Rescue to be able to get into the Champions Guild and buy yourself that blue cape. On the 17th of March, we have a new area, which is the Cooking Guild. And with the introduction of the cooking guild, we have a couple of skill extensions. The cooking skill got extended, you are now able to bake a red berry, meat and apple pie 
as well as wine. The smithing skill also got extended. You are now able to smith blade skirts. And mining kinda had an update. People were mining and all of a sudden they get uncut gems instead of minerals. However, this was a bug and it only took Andrew Gower one hour to fix this bug. And now we just need to wait until also the crafting skill gets updated to know the uses of those gems. Now back to the cooking guild. That is the red berry pie successfully baked, the meat pie, as well as the apple pie. And finally, the unfermented wine is successfully fermented after waiting 12 seconds. This is how it is done in old school RuneScape. In RuneScape Classic, however, you attempt to add grapes to a jug of water and after 6 seconds, you either get a bad wine or a regular wine. How making wine was originally done between March and June 2001 was also to add grapes to a jug of water to get unfermented wine just like in old school runescape. Now to ferment this unfermented wine you need to move to 20 different zones. And moving to a different zone is the same as seeing a loading screen. Now the easiest and the fastest way to see a loading screen is to go up and down a ladder. 14, 15, 16, still unfermented, 17, 18, it's still unfermented, 19, 20. There it is, wine. There is no bad wine. You also don't need a cooking level, um, only level 32. That was the first difference. The second difference between wine of March 2001 and wine of June 2001 was the drink option. At first, jugs of wine were drunk in two parts, much like the newly released pies. After June 11th, however, jugs were suddenly chucked in one go. This causes the item half jug of wine to be discontinued. Now, if we take a quick look at the Grand Exchange of Ruskip 3, the half jug of wine is currently worth around 30 billion GP. And that was it for the game updates of March 2001. Now, I want to leave you with a new discovery made on the 23rd of March 2001. After just two and a half months after the release of Ruskip, the player Shark was the first player to have found adamantite ore. And with the help of the player Blue Rose 13X, we now know that it requires level 70 to mine and level 70 to smith. Now, what was your favorite game update? Okay, thanks, bye.